Welcome to Remote Backup Systems How-To Series for RBackup version 11, How to Configure Email Notifications Using the Console Interface, the RBS Manager. To configure email notifications for RBackup version 11 using the Web Manager GUI, pick Tools and Email Notifications. The first tab is to define the SMTP server settings. That's your outgoing mail server. This is where you enter the SMTP server's address, port number, and timeout. 60 is usually good. If your SMTP server requires authentication, then click Requires Authentication and enter your credentials. There are five email notifications available at this interface. They are for successful backup notifications, failed backups, missed backups, uh, users who are over quota, and new users. The successful backup notification is sent whenever a backup is successful. It's the most common one. To enable this, uh, this notification, click Enabled. The to email address is the address to which the email will be sent. You can either uh, select the user email, which is the email address associated with each end user account, or you can, accept, you can uh, use the account group email, which is the email address associated with the account group, or you can type one in. Enter the from address. This will show up in the outgoing emails as the from. Carbon copy and blind carbon copy. Some people uh, choose, some, some service providers choose to enter their own email address in the BCC field. That way they, uh, they get email notifications uh, for their end users. The subject is successful email notification. You can type anything you want in here. There are also some macros that you can enter in the subject. Macros will be converted at the time the email is sent to things like the user's uh, first name or last name, or uh, the set name. These macros are defined in the documentation for the RBS server. So look, un look in there under email notifications. For some email notifications, you can also attach a log to the email. The log file is sent uh, attached to the email as a zip file. That's a compressed archive. Um, we suggest that you use that with uh, uh, that you don't use it on on all customers or all notifications because some email readers will reject it if it has a zip file attached to it, but you can decide. The, um, uh, all of the email notifications are defined by templates, and to edit the templates, click here. This brings up the template in text format using Windows Notepad. All the email notifications sent from our backup are in HTML format. They can be displayed in HTML format or in uh, uh, text format if you surround the HTML text with the pre-tag, pre-formatted. Uh, I will drag on screen um, an email notification. This is the uh, default email notification that ships with our backup. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it is uh, HTML. Um, the uh, little graphic here is brought in by this image source tag right here. That's what creates the graphic. Um, these are macros uh, and I'll show you, let me try to split the screen a little bit here. Yep, okay good. Uh, as you can see this, you can see the source code on the left and you can see the um, the result on the right. This is the email that was actually received. So this line username uh, was displayed in a table format as username and this macro username surrounded with octothorpes, the number sign, was uh, the, the name of the user. In this case, it was test user. The backup set name was test, the number of files sent, defined by this macro. There are 52 macros that you can include in the body of these emails. For a list and how to to use these emails, uh, to use these macros, see the RBS servers documentation. Um, these macros that can be included can 
can contain all sorts of data. Uh, it can it contain the number of bytes that were stored. They can re uh, re they can return the quota and the percentage of quota that's being used. Uh, just uh, many many things. Okay, so when you're finished editing, you can click this button and save it, and that will save into the successful backup notification template. There's also a failed backup notification that can be sent. The failed backup notification can be sent if a backup session starts but doesn't finish for some reason. Uh, it can also be sent uh, as defined elsewhere in the uh, in the uh, e email notifications, uh, again, see the uh, server's documentation for how to how to configure this. Failed backup notification can be sent uh, if if a backup starts and then doesn't finish. Uh, it can also be sent if there are warnings or errors in the log. Uh, missed backup notifications are kind of a different uh, different item. Um, missed backup notifications are sent all in batch at a time scheduled by this time right here. So for example, this one is set for 10 a.m. So daily at 10 a.m., the server will check all of its sessions for the past 24 hours. Uh, it will look at the ones that were, the ones that were came in and that came in and then compare it to those that were supposed to come in. Any that didn't come in will be sent the missed backup notification. Over quota notification is sent when uh, users go over quota. This is also sent in batch. This one is scheduled for 10 a.m., but you can schedule it for any time. And new user notifications, usually sent to the service provider himself. This is sent in case uh, a new user adds himself to the system using the registration wizard plugin. And let me return to the failed backup notifications. Uh, many service providers choose to uh, put their own email address in the BCC field here for the failed backup notification. Uh, this will send uh, the failed backup notification to the service provider in case you want to manage by exception uh, so you'll know which, which backups failed. The notification log shows a report of all the notifications sent for the past period of time and it can be today, yesterday, or last week and can be uh, sorted by all or successful or uh, any, any of these here. Uh, to, run the, uh, to run this, just pick Run, and that will run the report and display the results in the middle. When you're finished, come, uh, when you're finished with all of the, when you're finished editing the email notifications and the mail server, pick Save. This will save all of your edits. Um, you can also, if you want to test the email notifications, you can pick the Try button. Pick Try and enter an email address. Click OK. The system will now send a test email notification and show the results in the box down at the bottom. This is a good way to test to see if the mail server is set up right. And also it gives you uh, a look at the uh, email notification itself when you're designing the HTML. Finally, when you want to broadcast emails to all of your end users, you can do it this way. You type in the subject, you type in the from address, you edit the template, and then you pick send now. When you do that, the, uh, this, the email that's defined in the template will be sent to all users. That's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, our help desk is at help.remote-backup.com. You can email us at sales at remote-backup.com or give us a call at 901-405-1234.